Welcome to Twilight Render's Getting Started video tutorial series. This is Terrain Tool Add-on for Twilight Render Pro. To create a terrain, open the Terrain Tool and push play next to the procedural terrain. The first type is Bumpy. You can create islands, just hit play again. With any terrain selected, you can keep hitting play again and replace the terrain with any terrain you wish. There are mountains, and finally, mounds. You can choose a random seed to change the look of the terrain. This is most evident by looking at the islands. With a different random seed, you will get different islands. This is the same with all procedural terrains. Now you can use this tool to raise, lower, smooth, or level your terrain. These tools will not show up unless you have a terrain selected first. Select a terrain, then use the raise or lower brush tool and click and drag on the terrain to raise it. Using the smooth tool, click and drag to smooth out the terrain. Using the level tool, it will force the terrain down to zero elevation. This will flatten out parts of the terrain. After you've chosen a tool, you can increase or decrease the radius of your work area. You can also increase or decrease the strength of the tool here. Quickly and easily change these parameters using the up and down and left and right arrow key shortcuts. The up and down arrow keys increase or decrease the radius, while the left and right arrow keys increase or decrease the strength. Hold the shift key down while clicking and dragging to lower the terrain. Using the shortcuts will greatly increase your workflow and the visual cues will help guide you as you modify the parameters. Another way to lower your terrain would be to set the tool strength to be a negative number. The terrain geometry size is initially set to 50 vertices. This is in the X and Y direction. You may increase or decrease the number of vertices, but then you must replace the terrain that is already in place. Here is what it looks like with the vertices set to 100. If you choose a very large size, such as 200 or more, be careful because it could slow down your computer greatly while it works. But if you have a powerful computer, it should be able to handle it. Now you can see that with the vertices set to 200, SketchUp is thinking for quite some time as it processes the mesh. Patience is a virtue. After several seconds of waiting, it has achieved the mesh that we specified. Now we can see what the islands would look like with 200 vertices. Now that we've created our terrain, we can actually fly down into it or walk around. The terrain can be scaled up or scaled down with SketchUp's native tools. When you are working with your terrain at a geometry size of 50 vertices, the tools should work nice and smoothly. We have now covered the basics for working with the Terrain Tool add-on for Twilight Render Pro. Other features of the tool include using a height map to generate a terrain, painting the terrain with a parametric material, and inserting terrains from Public Terrain Mapping Data Services. Using a height map in the Terrain Editor allows you to import height data from surveyors or from various sources on the web. You can also create your own terrain very easily. To create a terrain height map, open any image editor and choose the size of image that you would like to use for your image map. As the name height map suggests, each pixel in the image will determine the height of the terrain that is created. White pixels will be the highest point on the map, black pixels will be the lowest point on the map, and 50% gray will be in the middle. We will paint in grayscale from full black to full white. Let's start by filling the image with 50% gray. Now if we paint with black, the terrain will be pushed down to the lowest point. And if we paint with white, the terrain will be pushed up to the highest point. 
If we use a blur tool and we blur the edge, it will transition more smoothly between the two colors that are touching each other. Now we save this texture. It's best to save it as a PNG file, which will be the smallest file but the highest quality. So height map, we load it into the terrain and then we choose a geometry size. And we hit play. And now you can see the dark part was pushed down and the white part was pushed up. Now we can also see that this is sort of pixelated or low quality terrain map created from this height map. So we can increase the geometry size to 100 and double the essential resolution of that terrain. And choose 100 vertices and we can see that it's much higher quality terrain with the height map. So the height map based terrain can be a powerful tool in your toolbox when working with twilight terrains. For instance, let's say we want to paint some sidewalks between this uh, low portion and the high portion of this terrain. We can paint with a white wherever we want our walkways and they will lead wherever we desire. That part of the terrain will be lifted up. And we can reload that height map. Hit play and replace the terrain. And now those pathways are lifted up. So hopefully you can see the power of the height map tool. Height maps can be generated automatically by surveyors with their terrain data. So it can be a very powerful tool. Twilight Renders Terrain Editor contains a fun and powerful terrain texturing tool. Let's open Twilight Render Version 2 Terrain Tool and let's create a terrain of 100 vertices. Let's utilize the Mountain Procedural Terrain and hit play. Now we will insert the terrain at the origin and zoom extents. If we were to select this texture in SketchUp and open the SketchUp Materials palette, we can open that texture file. When we open the file in Photoshop, we will see that it is quite low in resolution. If we paint with a brush onto the terrain texture, and save and close that file, it will be remapped automatically into SketchUp. We can see that the terrain appears pixelated and would be very difficult for us to paint with any detail. Choose your terrain and go to the Texture tab in Twilight Terrain Tool dialog and increase the resolution of the texture to 2000 pixels. Now we can choose whatever texture size we like. The higher the texture resolution, the better. Now each of these texture files that we load next will be in layers, the base layer being the lowest layer, and so on. Let's start with the grass texture. We will want to choose a seamless grass texture. Let's try this dark seamless grass texture. Now we can see the preview, and if we hit play, it will map the texture onto the surface of the terrain for us. Now this texture has been placed at 50 pixels for each tile, so let's change that to be 200 pixels wide per tile. Now that grass texture will be repeated only 10 times across our 2000 pixel terrain, because 2000 pixels wide divided by 200 is 10 tiles. So let's choose a different texture for the next layer. We will choose a lighter colored grass texture using a different seamless grass. Now we will choose the transition between these two textures. Here is the blur number right between the two textures. We can choose the transition point and the blur between our two texture layers. 
So if we want the bottom 35% of the mountain terrain to be dark grass, then make a smooth transition to lighter grass color, we set this to 35%. Now when we hit play, the darkest part will be 35% up the mountains, and the lighter colored grass is above that. So if we set the blur amount and hit play, now the blur will work to make a more natural blend between the two textures. Let's choose another texture for the next layer for the middle of the mountains. We will choose a seamless gravel texture. And we are going to set the transition height between these two levels so here we will choose for the transition height to be 65% up the mountains. Now we will choose to make it blurry just as we've done before. And let's give it a blur of about 30%. And recreate the texture map by hitting play again. Now we will see the tops of the mountains are gravel color. 50 pixel wide tile resolution for that gravel texture is too small so let's choose 200 and for this other texture we will set it to 100. Now it will change the tiling. This looks better. We are going to choose one more texture for the tops of the mountains. Let's make it a snowy texture. We've created a seamless noise texture in Photoshop. Now we will use that noise texture as a tiling snow texture. We will set the tile width to be 200 pixels and create the transition up at 90% of the terrain height. Now the very tops of the mountains will be white and we will give it a blur of 20% and hit play. Now we can see the tops of the mountains are white. If we would like to increase the amount of snow on the mountains, we simply lower the transition point. So let's try 80% and hit play again. Now we can see that there is more snow on the mountains. Let's try setting the base texture to something different like water. Again, it needs to be a seamless texture, so let's choose a seamless pool water texture. After we open it, we will want to set the tiling resolution correctly. It's at 200 pixels transitioning at 35%. Maybe we could change the pool water to be tiling at 100 pixels and hit play. Now the pool water will show up in the lowest elevations of the texture map. Finally, let's explore the slope texture feature. You will load it here. Let's try using the gravel texture. This is to put a texture on the steepest slopes of the terrain. The threshold is set to degrees of slope, so if we set this to 30 degrees slope, then the texture will show up on slopes that are greater than 30 degrees. Let's set the tile at 50 pixels and 10 degrees blur. This means that any time the slope is above 30 degrees angle, it will show this texture. Let's hit play and see how that changes. Now we can see on the steep parts we have this gravel texture. Now we can use this as a tool to put snow on the steep faces of the mountains. Let's grab the same texture that we used before, the noise texture, 
for snow and load that into the slope and hit play. Now we have snow on the steepest faces of the terrain. The bias number is a multiplier which causes the terrain editor to calculate each point as x multiplier in height greater than shown in SketchUp. The result of this is to make the terrain editor treat the mesh as steeper or shallower than it is shown. So if we set the multiplier to 1.5, each point will be calculated as 1.5 times higher than it actually is. So now each face will be viewed as steeper than it was before. If you want to quickly change the effect of all your textures at once, that's how you can do it, by using the slope bias multiplier. But you may find that simply choosing a slope texture and setting a degree slope threshold will be a lot more user-friendly and easy to control. Here let's try a threshold of something quite steep. Maybe try 50 degrees and hit play. Here we can see how that will affect the terrain texture. Let's disable the snow texture that we put in previously on tops of the mountains so now we will only see snow landing on the slopes defined under the bias texture. Now the snow will show up only on these 50 degree sloped faces. Now we understand all we need to get started making amazing textures for our terrains in Twilight Render's Terrain Editor. So now with Twilight Render's Terrain Tool, we can also import terrain data from anywhere in the world anywhere that is loaded on a server anyway. This is more powerful than the terrain insertion tool that comes out of the box with default SketchUp Pro. So now we will choose terrain and we will choose WMTS. So try using WMTS first and if it doesn't seem to work for your terrain, then try the WMS option. After entering the terrain tool, you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Now we can choose anywhere in the world and import that terrain. We are going to go to Google Maps and place a point on the map. Here we are at Cinque Terre, Italy. Now we will click on the map to place a specific point. Now we highlight the latitude and longitude coordinates with the mouse and copy using Control C on our keyboard. Open the Terrain tool in Twilight Render and paste in the coordinates, then press the Go To button and it will jump to that position on the map. Now we can choose the geometry size, and since we want it to be fairly detailed model in this case, we will choose 200 vertices. Increasing the vertices will cause your computer to think quite hard, but 200 vertices seems to work quickly. Now we will hit OK and it will load the terrain data into the SketchUp model quite nicely. Now we can walk around the terrain and edit or work with it in any way we need. This concludes how to use the terrain tool. For further information on how to use the Twilight Render Terrain tool and all the details, check out the Twilight Render Tutorials section of our website. You can also learn how to access your own private terrain data server through this terrain tool. Thank you for watching, we hope to see you on the forums, and please be sure to hit like and subscribe for more tutorials from Twilight Render.